Here we go. Let me open up the page. Okay. This story is called The Witch and the Little Village Bus. Let me show you a picture. Okay, here's a title. The Witch and the Little Village Bus. Okay, here we go. Simon was late for school. So that was how he came to jump on the village bus. And that was how he happened to meet Ginny the Witch. He had sat down next to her before he had properly noticed her. She was a very ugly old witch. She had a pale green face, tiny red eyes like hot cinders, a spot on the end of her long nose, and gray hair which reached down to her knees. Simon was pleased. He liked witches. He hoped she was going to be a really wicked old witch like the ones he had read about. What have you got in your bag? He asked her. In my bag? My magic wand, of course. My savings account passbook and my knitting. Oh, said Simon. He was a little disappointed. He had hoped that the witch would have had a black toad or at least a couple of dead spiders. They were passing the school gates, but Simon was too interested to notice. Fares, please, said the conductor. Simon paid his fare. Fares, said the conductor to the witch. You forgot to say please, reminded Jenny the witch. Why should I say please to an old witch like you, said the conductor rudely. Because it's manners, replied the witch. Fares, snapped the conductor. If you do not say please, said the witch, I shall change your silly old bus into something else. So, do you guys know what the word fares means? Anyone who knows the word can just tell me. If you know the word. Fares, F-A-R-E-S. There are two kinds of fairs. One kind of fair is the fair, which is like a festival. There's fun food. There are carnivals. But there is another kind of fair, which the book is talking about. This fairs means uh, it's the money you have to pay when you have to ride a bus. The conductor's the bus driver. He's going to ask you to pay your money. Those are fairs. So let's review what's happened in the book so far. There's a boy named Simon who was late to go to school. So he quickly jumped on the village bus. Then he sat down next to a witch. Now the, um, the conductor of the bus, he's asking everyone to pay their money. And he said, please, to everyone except for the witch. Now, the witch is not paying her money because the conductor did not say the word please. So, the conductor is getting annoyed, and the witch just told him, if you don't, if you don't say please, I will change your bus into something else with her magic wand because she's a witch. What do you think she's going to change the bus into? Anyone have any ideas? You can chat it too. Anyone think they have ideas? No one? Okay. Let's move on and see. The conductor was now very cross. Shant, he said. Shan't means shall not. At that, the witch opened her handbag and started to search for her wand. As soon as she found it, she changed the bus into a fast express train. Whee! went the fast express train. It shot down the village street, through the red lights, and out onto the freeway. 
On the freeway was a big sign which said London, 50 miles. Hey, shouted Farmer Spud, I do not want to go to London. I want to go to Little Hampton to buy a pig. Hey, shouted Mrs. Gummidge, I do not want to go to London either. I want to go to Little Hampton to buy some shoelaces. Let me show you an interesting picture. This is the freeway train. The witch turned the bus into this. It's a super fast train. There we go. And let me show you the characters. So this boy over here is Simon. Then over here is the witch. Over here is the conductor of the bus, who's now, he's driving the fares, like an express train now. Here's Mrs. Gummidge. And here is Farmer Spud. These are the people riding the express train now, instead of the bus. Let's see what happens next. Hey, said the bus driver, I do not know how to drive this thing. It is much too fast. Jenny the witch said nothing. She took her knitting out of her bag and began to knit very fast. Simon was delighted. It was not very long before the roaring train reached London. There were cars and buses everywhere. The train was bumping into them one after another. This is terrible, said the conductor. Stop, stop it. I will if you say please, said the witch. Otherwise, I shall change your silly old train into something else. I will still not say please to a witch, shouted the rude conductor. Suit yourself, said Ginny. She put away her knitting, searched again for her wand, and changed the train into a green caterpillar. What do you think is going to happen to all the passengers if they're riding a slippery caterpillar? What do you think? Do you think they will fall off? They're going to fall down. Yeah, because it's so slippery now. Help, cried Farmer Spud, falling off. Help, cried Mrs. Gummidge, falling off also. Help, help, cried the conductor and the bus driver. The caterpillar was far too slippery to ride on. It was also much too small. The passengers were obliged to walk along beside it. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, complained Farmer Spud. I have never been on a bus like this in the whole of my life. You are not on it, man, are you? Snapped Mrs. Gummidge irritably. Watch it, cried the bus driver. It's going down that grid. Laughing, Simon rescued the little caterpillar and set it on its way again. There was actually a great deal of trouble and bother watching the caterpillar. First, it went this way, and then the other. It did not seem to have any clear idea where it wanted to go. The bus driver was extremely worried about it. He had to get his bus back to the garage by six o'clock. It was already half past four. Suddenly, a big policeman stepped into the road to direct the traffic. Watch out, gasped the bus driver. You're stepping on our bus. Let me show you a picture of them all falling off the bus. Here you go. Who can spot the caterpillar in the picture? Look closely, you'll be able to see it. Do you guys see it? It is right here. Now, do you guys see it? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Okay. 
the he the witch turned it into a caterpillar. So now the caterpillar is too small and it is too slippery. So they all have to walk alongside it. And they have to make sure that it's moving in the right direction or they're going to lose the caterpillar, which is actually their bus, and the bus will be gone. So let's review the story so far. There's a boy named Simon who's late for school, and he jumped onto the village bus to go there. Then he sat down next to a witch named Ginny the Witch. He, um, the conductor of the bus, he asked everyone to pay their money or fares, and he said please to everyone except for the witch, just because she was a witch. So the witch is not paying her money because no one said please to her. The witch told the conductor that if you do not say please to me, I will turn your bus into something silly. She first turned the bus into a fast express train. Then the bus driver begged her to turn it back into a bus. But she told him, I will only do that if you say please to me. But the bus driver was so rude, he still did not want to say please to the witch just because she was a witch. So then she turned the bus into a slimy small caterpillar. Now the caterpillar is too small and it's just a bug. So it's moving around this way, this way, wherever it wants. It doesn't know it's a bus. Then all the passengers are humans. So they have to stand next to the caterpillar and make sure it doesn't go the wrong direction because it's actually their bus. Now, let's see what is happening next. Right now, the bus driver gasped, watch out, you're stepping on our bus. The big London policeman looked around in all directions. He could not see a bus. He could see only a bus driver, a conductor, a farmer, an old woman, a small boy, and a very ugly witch. I'm busy, he said. Watch out. This is terrible, moaned the bus driver. For goodness sake, say please to the old witch. I cannot possibly, said the conductor. I never say please to witches. Suit yourself said Ginny the witch. She had almost finished her knitting. Let me show you another picture. This is the policeman, and these are all the passengers pointing to the caterpillar, saying it's the bus. Do you think the policeman will believe that? Give me a thumbs up if you think he won't. Yep, he's not going to believe that. Why would he think a caterpillar is a bus? Let's see what happens next. It was nearing the rush hour. The rush hour is a terrible thing. Trains and buses and cars and people rush about everywhere in a great hurry. They squash and push and squeeze each other. There is certainly no room for a caravan drawn by six cart horses. So this is what the witch decided to do. She pulled out her wand and changed the little caterpillar into a handsome caravan drawn by six cart horses. The caravan took up a lot more room than the caterpillar had. Who knows what a caravan looks like? It's like a carriage. Give me a thumbs up if you know what that is. Thumbs up. Okay. Up, you do know what that is? Yeah, okay, that's good. The caravan took up a lot more room than the caterpillar had. Moreover, the cart horses could not tell green lights from red lights. They clattered clumsily on. They did not understand what the policemen were shouting about. When cars and buses kicked them, they kicked back with a will. This is great, cried Simon. It's better than school. 
this is monstrous cried the bus driver my pig my shoelaces cried farmer spud and mrs gummidge together looking at the time it was now five o'clock they would never get back to the garage the six cart horses caught sight of a large park it looked nice and green they trotted in for a feed of grass they can't do that exclaimed the bus driver there isn't time it's your conductor who is making us late not my horses anyway i'm tired she hung up her hat on a branch and sat down under a tree for a nap she's going to sleep cried farmer spud indignantly he shook her and said wake up wake up you bad old witch go away yawned jinny i've had a hard day no one knew what to do except simon he had run off to play with the horses he did not mind one bit how late it was then mrs gummidge got very cross now just you listen to me conductor she scolded prodding him in the stomach with her umbrella it is high time we went home we have had enough of this nonsense mend your manners and say please to that old witch at once but i never say please to mrs gummidge poked her umbrella a little harder oh very well grumbled the conductor he was worn out anyway who knows here what worn out means give me a thumbs up if you know it good who wants to share with me what it means you can chat it if you'd like as well no one okay worn out means you're super tired right everybody thumbs up if you got that okay oh very well grumbled the conductor he was worn out anyway he shuffled over to jenny fares please he said in a sulky voice jenny opened one red eye and said excuse me fares please said the conductor again Jinny put one finger into her ear and rubbed it very hard until it squeaked. Excuse me, she said again. There's, please. This time the conductor said it very politely. Now that's better, declared the witch. She whisked out her wand and she changed the caravan and the six cart horses into a... Who wants to guess what she changed it back into? Who thinks she changed it back into a bus? Give me a thumbs up if you think that's what she did. Well, she actually didn't. She changed the caravan and the six cart horses into a big jet. Everybody scrambled in as fast as they could. Let me show you a picture of Mrs. Gummidge telling the conductor to ask the witch politely. That's the witch sleeping. Then there's Mrs. Gummidge poking the conductor with her umbrella. Okay. Zoom went the jet, and before the bus driver, or the conductor, or the farmer, or the old woman, or the little boy had time to think, they were in Little Hampton. The stores were shut, so it was too late for Farmer Spud to buy his pig, or Mrs. Gummidge her shoelaces. But it was still only one minute before six o'clock. Just enough time for... The witch to change the big jet plane back into the village bus. Thank you, madam, said the conductor, very politely. You're welcome, said the witch, any time. Then she went home with Simon to explain to Simon's mother why he was home a little late for supper. Yeah.
end. Let me show you one more picture of Simon and the witch. This is the witch taking Simon home to explain to Simon's mother why they're late. Okay. How did everyone like the story? It's good? Great. Now I'm just going to ask everyone a few questions. Just give me a second. Okay, let's start with the questions now. Here we go. So, what is the name of the little boy who jumped onto the village bus because he was late to school? Simus. Sorry, can you say that again? Simus. Uh, Simon. Yes, you got it. Okay. Who were the people who were riding the bus? Tell me as many as you can remember. The cop, the witch, and the uh, kids. <laughs> you were really close. The witch is riding the bus. The bus driver is. The conductor is. The farmer, Spud, is. The little boy, Simon, is. And Mrs. Gummidge is. Who remembers what Farmer Spud wanted to do? Why was he on the bus? Where was he going? Does anyone remember? He was going to school. Good guess. Far, to the farm. Another good guess. Let me tell you. He wants to go to Little Hampton to buy a pig. Now do you get now do you remember? Yes, Hampton Pig. Uh-huh. And what does Mrs. Gummidge want to do? She wanted to go with Simon. Uh good guess, but no. She wanted also to go to Little Hampton, but to buy shoelaces. Shoelaces. Do you all know what shoelaces are? Thumbs up yes. if you do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You do I too. also know what shoelaces are. Good. There we go. Okay. Who can describe to me what the old witch looks like? For example, what's her hair color? How? Why how... she's wearing a black hat? Yes. She was wearing. Um, she had a pale green face. Tiny red eyes like hot cinders, a spot on the end of her long nose, and gray hair which reached down to her knees. And she, yeah, she was also wearing a, um, a green coat and a black hat, if you remember from the picture. Okay. Who remembers what the word fairs mean? Fairs? Uh, yes. Does it mean that there's two different fares that you're saying? Does it mean that you have to pay the fare for the bus? Yes. And for taxis? Yes. It's money. Another question. Tell me one thing that Jenny the Witch turned the bus into. Does anyone remember something she turned it into? No one? Okay. She turned the bus into a horse-driven caravan, a caterpillar, and a fast express train. Why did Ginny the Witch turn the bus into those things? Does anyone remember? Why was she turning the bus into things like that? 
one. Because, because um, the witch, she's she was going to pay her fares, except the bus driver did not say please to her. So she did not, not pay her fares. And then finally, in the end, the bus driver said please. And she finally turned it back into a jet so they could all reach home on time. Okay, one last question. When Jenny turned the bus into a fast express train, what place did it reach? What place did it go to? All remembers? Okay, it went to London. So there were cars and buses everywhere. So hopefully you guys like the story. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is our last class. It was super fun with you guys. Hopefully you liked all the stories. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully you have something fun to do over the weekend. Yes. Okay, so our class is over now, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, okay. Have a nice weekend. You too. Bye, Abby. Bye. 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 Bye-bye.